Hi, this is Philip Axelrod with the Yukon Pistol and Rifle Club, broadcasting from Rockville Fishing Game Club. Today I'm doing a little bit of a review of this. This is sort of my PDW, Personal Defense Weapon Build. Uh, got the upper receiver parts all on sale and sort of stars lined up and I have a uh, wonderful little 7.5 inch barrel AR-15 upper receiver for not all that much money. It's a Noveski Diplomat barrel, 7.5 inches long with a pistol length gas system. On the end of it is a Rainier Arms Mini Comp. It's a great little single baffle compensator. I picked this because I wanted to build the loudest rifle I possibly could with the biggest possible fireball. So sometimes I call this my asshole rifle. I made it to be obnoxious because I thought it was fun. It's a Mega Arms tubular pistol length upper receiver. It's monolithic upper. So it's one piece. Have a Magpul Embus front and rear sights. These are the polymer sights from Magpul. Good little sights for what they are. Definitely a great value in the firearms community. If you're looking for some backup iron sights, take a look at them. And I also have an Aimpoint H1 in a LaRue quick detach mount. The uh, Aimpoint H1 is a, basically the same as their T1, except without the night vision capability. It's a little bit less waterproof, but it suits me just fine for uh, civilian shooting on a square range. It's top on top of my uh, registered short barreled rifle lower receiver, it's an essential arms. It is registered to me on a Form 1. Has a Geisley super dynamic three gun trigger. Very light, awesome trigger. If you're looking for a high dollar trigger, take a look at it, it's fantastic. And it has a pinned Voltor mod stock on it. Because I live in a banned state, such as life. So today I'm shooting this. I've put a couple hundred rounds through it since I built it in the fall. I absolutely love this rifle. The PDW concept is something that interests me just as a fun gun. I don't really jump out of car seats in the, my daily life and have to fend off waves and waves of the oncoming hordes. But that's really what this kind of uh, the size of a firearm is designed to do. It's very fast. It's very light. I don't have a scale for it. I don't have a postal scale or anything at home. But I'd estimate this rifle is about six pounds, just under probably. So I'm out here shooting groups today, and I finished shooting those up. I was uh, trying out six different types of ammunition from uh, 55 grain M193 from Federal to Federal M855, which is the 62 grain green tip penetrator rounds. I tried out some 75 grain PRVI target ammunition, which is a uh, good value in practice target ammunition if you're looking for heavier stuff. I, I love it. Speak the praises. I also tried some 75 grain tap, which is arguably the best round to run something like this with. It is a heavy, reliable, and accurate hollow point round, and it, I'll uh, post the groups at the end so you can see for yourself, but it was very tight shooting. And I also tried some 77 grain Remington target rounds, and those group the best. They are designed to be extraordinarily consistent. So for shooting groups, I had the uh, Zeiss 4.5 to 14 power Conquest on a LaRue mount. This is a great little optic. I've had it for a little while. I have it on, uh, usually mounted on a Mark 12 style rifle. So more of a precision based 223 caliber rifle, 556 caliber rifle. I put it on the 7.5. It looked comically large and really gave me that little bit of extra magnification I needed to figure out how tight this thing can shoot. Now the downside to a rifle like this is that it's loud. And again, that's one of the reasons I built this is because I think that's fun. But if you're looking for a serious use duty carbine or a serious use sh should the end of the world as we know it should hit the fan kind of stuff, seven and a half inch barrel might not be what you go for, at least not with this compensator. I live in a state where you can't have a flash hider on a post band rifle. This is a post band lower receiver, so I can't use a flash hider. So at least without a flash hider, this probably isn't the best concept for a fighting rifle. It's a huge fireball, extremely loud. You cannot shoot this without ear protection without having lasting hearing damage. But it is a shit ton of fun. A little bit of a demonstration. giant fireball. You can feel it. It's like getting smacked in the face with an air compressor every shot. Marvelously entertaining. To go with this rifle, I also have 
a 22 conversion. This is a Spikes Tactical 22 caliber con uh, AR-15 conversion. It uses the Black Dog magazine, 25 round mags. We also have 15 and 10 rounders available for people in states with mag restrictions. It's all uh, covered in, I think it's NP3, might be polished chrome or something. I don't really remember what the covering was, but it's a now discontinued part. Bought it a few years ago and it's definitely the best value I have ever had in firearms. Best $200 I've ever spent. If you are looking for a 22 conversion, I love my spikes. They don't make them anymore. I'm sure things like CMMG uh, make fantastic little conversions as well. And I've actually debated turning this into a dedicated 22. But it would be a great little fighting gun if you're looking for something that you can slap a flash hider on or even a suppressor. Most suppressor manufacturers won't warranty a seven and a half inch barrel because the pressure is enormous at the end of this round, uh, at the end of this barrel as the round comes out. So unless you have a suppressor with an Iconel uh, baffle or mount or both preferably, chances are your suppressor manufacturer won't warranty a seven and a half inch barrel. As I've talked about in my previous videos, at the 100 yard uh, line on this range, there's a big steel plate. And with a seven and a half inch barrel, you can still hear it smack every time. With such a short barrel, you lose a lot of velocity of your rounds. And so the effective range is essentially halved, if not more so, from what you would get with a 14 and a half inch carbine, a 16 inch carbine, or a 20 inch rifle. The effective range of the 20 inch M16 is about 600 meters. With a seven and a half inch barrel, I would probably cut that into a third and say about 200 meters for uh, effective hits on targets. That's not to say you can't shoot past that with seven and a half inch barrels, but that's pretty much my comfort zone. And at realistic distances for defense, you're probably talking about 50 to 100 yards for good shots with such a light rifle. So if you're in the market for a fun little SBR that may or may not have a lot of tactical value to it, just a great little range toy, great little backpack gun, something like that, I'd suggest looking into a seven and a half inch barrel. It's pretty much as short as you can get with reliable function. This hasn't choked on a round yet, and I've put a couple hundred rounds through it, so there's still a lot of time, a lot of room for error, but great little rifle, lots of fun, especially with a 22 conversion for kids, for people who are, might be uh, muzzle blast sensitive, and a shit ton of fun on the range. Stay safe, good shooting.